What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to teach you and I'm going to show you how to create another bot, but in this case it's going to be with an artificial intelligence. We've done this in the past, but in this case, this bot is going to be special. Why? Because in the previous one, it was like more simpler. This one is going to be much more complex. So you can see here what we are going to use. We are going to use the RSI, the MACD, and uh, an EMA. So we are going to use this. So how is the bot going to work? Remember that it has an artificial intelligence. And for that, we need to generate data. So this is what we are going to do in this video. We are going to generate data. But data about what? So what we are going to do is that on every MACD clause, uh, cross, we are going to say, uh, ask to the AI if we should upper, open or not the a position. So for example, here, we would send all the data related to <clears throat> the previous values of the RSI, the previous values of the MACD, the previous values of the EMA, if the price is below, is above, we are going to send all that information and the AI based on all the data that it has taken is going to say, hey, you should open an, uh, an operation. Hey, you should not. So that's what we are going to do. So how do we do this? First of all, open the IDE. And here in the IDE, let me move it to this screen. We are going to do lots of stuff. So for this project, let me create a folder. So here, let me open this experts and we are just simply going to create a new folder which is going to be AI and let's put here bot perfect you can see that now this appears here and now inside this folder we are going to create a new expert advisor you can see that you click here and this will pop up this is popping up in the other screen yeah expert advisor and here we are going to give it a name so for example we are going to say data gen because we are going to generate data Okay, data gen. You don't have to click any of this stuff. You click on next and, and that's it. But before we go on, I have to show you one thing. And is, is the, the GitHub. So here you have my GitHub. Indeed, this is the, the code of the bot. This is everything. So if you come here to my profile, click on one, and then you click on repositories, here you have AI MACD RSI EMA bot. So this is the bot. You can take it, you can do whatever you want with it. So yeah, here we have it. And another thing is that we need to configure the, the bot in some, well, the MetaTrader 5 in some special ways. Like now it's not very important, but in the future it will be important. So how do we do this? Just come here to tools. Then you click options and okay, this is again showing up in the other screen. You have to here press this allow algorithmic trading. Then if you come to, let me search for this because I don't remember what is this. Allow, yeah, I think it was here, yeah, here. <laughs> here you should also click this and you should add local host. You should add this one and that's it. <laughs> you don't need anything else. And now we are truly ready to start the bot. So how? Uh, what are we going to do? As I said before, what we are going to do is that we are going to create a file that generates data. So our AI is based on the previous uh, uh, events of the MACD and all that stuff that we have. So how do we start? First of all, we are going to need lots of things. All this data is going to be saved in a file. So we should have a name, a file name. So we are going to put here input string and let's put here file name. And here you can give a default value such as data.csv. Perfect. This is going to be the name of the file. Then we have here input int, which is the number of data to save. What I mean by this is that, for example, do you remember that before here I told you that, hey, 
on every cross, what we are going to do is that we are going to take the 10 previous values of the MACD, of the RSI, of the EMA. So we are not only going to do that. Well, what we are going to do is just, yeah, the, those 10 values, but why 10? Why wouldn't we be able to take, for example, 100 or 200? As many as we can. So here, this variable is going to say how many data do we want to save. So here we have num data to save, and we are actually going to leave this at 10. You can put the number that you want. So yeah, we are going to put number of data to save. Then we need another parameter, which is going to be the candles to close operation. I haven't explained this thing, but it's actually very simple. What are we going to do here? Also, what we are going to do is that we want a bot that, for example, once there's a cross, we are going to close the operation three candles after the close. We are not looking for a for an amount of points or anything. We just want to close the bot after an amount of of time in this case. So this variable is going to be for this. So here we have this. And in this case, we've set two candles. You could have here, for example, five candles, put whatever you want. So this is the number, well, number of candles to save, well, to close operation, to close operations. Perfect. So now we start with the variables of the bot. Here, this was, these were the parameters, and now we are going to put, for example, the file pointer, because we are going to open a file to store all that data. What else do we need? In that file, we are going to have some data, which is going to be a string. This string is going to be for each line, like it's not going to contain all the information of the file. No, it's just going to contain each line. And yeah, the next thing that we need is an MQL rates variable, which contains the candles. So here, this is an array of candles. This type contains the close, the open, the hide, all those things. That is perfect. Another thing that we are going to need are uh, variables for the indicators, because remember that here we have the Emma, then here we have the MACD, and here we have the RSI. So lots of indicators. We are going to start with the Emma, and for the Emma we need a handler, which is going to be this one, and then an array to store the values. So this array, what is storing, is this line, because actually this line, what it is, is just a series of number. So let me zoom in. Here you have a value, here you have another value, here you have another value, and another, and another. Is just that, a series of points. And you can see that here they are connected. And indeed, on every indicator is like this. So for example, this, the MACD, is just like that, a series of points. So these points can be stored in an array. And that's what we are going to do here. We need the exact same thing for the RSI. So here we're going to put RSI, RSI. And now for the MACD, this changes a little bit. So we still need a handler, just one, but check this out. The MACD contains two things, not only just one. It contains the signal line, which is this red one, and then the actual MACD, which is this. So we need to store those two things. So we are going to need two arrays. First one for the signal, and then another one for the MACD. Okay, with this, we are fine. Now we are going to need some variables to handle the operations. So for example, we are going to need a Boolean variable, which is going to tell us like, is open operation. And at the beginning it's going to be false. So this is going to say, hey, there's an operation open, it's not, whatever. The next thing is that we need a variable to store the number of candles. So here we put candles, Bella, well, <laughs> let me put it in English, candles. And then here we are also going to store the price open in which an operation was open. 
You may be confused right now. You may not understand why am I creating these variables, but later in the video, you will understand it better. There's another thing, just one thing that we have to create, which is an enumeration of the types of operations. I know that we could use uh, uh, a type defined by MQL5, but I'm not going to do that. So here we put cell and buy. Perfect. Okay, now that we have this enumeration, we actually have to create a variable with that. So op types, this is now a new type, and the variable is going to be last operation. Perfect. We are also going to need those uh, t functions, which are by cross to detect a cross, a by cross, and here we will do this later. And also we are going to need another function to detect cell crosses. But again, we are going to do this later. Okay, we now have everything we need to start. So now we are going to start by using a, a new, well, an event. This event is going to be on init. So what is this event saying? It is saying that, hey, whenever you launch the bot, execute what is inside here. So what are we going to put here? For example, since we are going to save data, we could open the file where we are going to send the data. And also we could initialize all these things related to the indicators and also this array. So we are going to do that. First of all, let's initialize the file. So for that, remember that here we have this file pointer and we are going to use file open. And okay, we need to give it a name. Which name? The one we have here, file name, which is given by us in the in the parameter section. Perfect. So now we need to put the mode and it's going to be file write because we are going to write this. Put it at zero because you don't need any delimiter. And then you can leave this like this. Yeah, you can leave it like this. So yeah, there will there won't be any kind of issue. Now that we have the oh, the file open. Since this is going to be a file to, to store data, usually in this data science uh, world, the data are stored in .csv files, as you can see here that I put this. These files usually also have a header in which you put what is the meaning of each column. So now we have to create that header that is going to contain, hey, this column relates to this value, which is what? This column, that. You are going to see this now, and it's actually very simple. So for example, since I said before uh, that we are going to store values of the MACD, Emma, and all that, let's, uh, let's create an example. Here, we could have, for example, Emma3, then Emma2. This will be the header, Emma1, and finally Emma0. Okay, this is for the Emma. Now imagine that we have the same for the MACD. So for example, instead of Emma, we have MACD. MACD. And here we have MACD. MACD. Again, now we would have the same for the signal and the same for the RSI. But then at the end, we would have another thing, which is that is the price above or below the Emma? For example, we could put Emma above well, above, below. And now we also need to categorize the type of crosses that we have. So for example, this is a buy cross, but this is a sell cross. So we need to also categorize that. Here we would have cross type. And finally, the class. Usually in data science, what class means in this case would be the result. So for example, the result of here, this cross is that after, I don't know, two candles, the price, let's say is above and it was a buy. This would be, this would have been successful. But for example, I don't know, here in this case is a sell. And again, after two candles, it is successful. But I don't know, let's see another example here, a sell, but after two candles is 
uh, above. So this wouldn't be a, a successful a successful example. So here we would have class zero. So this is the header and this is how it's going to be. And you are going to see that it's something very simple. So we are going to declare here a variable, which is going to be the file header. And it's going to be at the beginning an empty, an empty string. And then we are going to put here for int i equals zero i less than. How many values do we need to store? Remember, numdata to save. So numdata to save i plus plus. And for example, we are going to store at the beginning the emmas. So we are going to put here file header plus equal emma. And now we could use this integer to store the number, as you saw before that emma0, emma1, something like that. So we are going to concatenate here integer to a string, and we need to send a value, which is going to be i. Perfect. Now we are going to also concatenate at the end a comma, and that's it. So this is exactly the same for the rsi, for the macd, and for the signal. So we can put here, in this case, per si. Now we are going to put here, in this case, macd. And finally, we are going to put here, in this case, signal. Okay, but we need something else. The last two things that I talked about before. So here in the file header, we are actually also going to put plus equal is above or below. Let's put here Emma above below and the cross type cross type and a comma at the end because we need to put the class. So here the class and after the class, we don't need any commas because there is not going to be anything else. Okay, perfect. So now we have the file header. How do we write it into the file? Very simple guys, file write. And here we need to send the handle, which is this fp. And here we actually need to send the string. So what do we want to write? The file header. Perfect. So now we can start with initializing all the indicators. So for example, here, let's initialize the Emma. And how do we initialize an indicator? It is very simple. I M A. And okay, which symbol do we want to use? Are we going to use this in the Bitcoin? Are we going to use this in the euro dollar or something like that? If you put this, it means it doesn't matter. In the we are going to use the symbol in which the bot is working. So it will automatically take that symbol. So if you put it in the euro USD, it will take euro USD. If you put it in the Bitcoin dollar, it will take the Bitcoin dollar. Perfect. So now we put here period. This is basically the same. It's going to take the, the current period. If you put it in the 15 minute period, it's going to take the 15 minute. Perfect. And now we need to put um, the, the parameters of the, of the indicator. So for example, in this case, the Emma is going to have 200 periods, no shift, mode Emma. And it is going to be applied to the price close. Perfect. So we are actually now going to initialize the RSI and it's actually very similar. I RSI, which is the symbol. The symbol is going to be the current one, which is the period, the current one, which is well, the period related to the to the time frame, not the period, the time frame. So now the actual period of the of the RSI is going to be 14 and this is going to be applied to the price close perfect so the next thing that we need to do macd well is to initialize the macd don't worry right now for these two things you just have to initialize this one which is the handler and in order to initialize it get, guess it i macd quite simple isn't it so again period and okay fast emma period this is going to be 12 slow emma period this is going to be 26 and signal period is going to be 9. these are the basic default values you can change it you can put whatever you want so here we have that this is going to be applied to the price close and we are basically finished with the handlers 
but we need to initialize something else for, um, from the indicators. In this case, is array set a series, we need to initialize the arrays. So for example, let's initialize the Emma, and now this is going to be exactly the same for all the arrays. So we can do this, and actually what this function is doing is that this is setting that, for example, if you put, if you access to the value zero, the first value of the Emma, this will do that the first value is the last one. So for example, the value one will be this one, the value two, this one, the value three, this one. If you don't put it like that, it won't be like that. So we are going to do this for the RSI. We are going to do this for the MACD. We are going to do this for the signal. Now we have to use those two arrays. And finally, we are going to do this for the candles, the array of candles. Also this one, don't forget about this one. Perfect. So now let's continue. And actually now we are going to use another event. In this case, the event is called on tick. So what is this event doing? On every tick of the market, so for example, you can see that whenever the price changes, there's a tick. So when that tick happens, we are going to execute whatever we put here. So what are we going to put here? First of all, we need to take the values of the of the indicators. So for example, now we need to know what is the value of the EMA, what is the value of the MACD, what is the value of the RSI. So we are going to do that. How? Let's put here copy buffer and okay, indicator handle. So which handle do we send? Well, the EMA, because we are going to take the information from the EMA. Buffer num. This is very important. Since the Emma only has one thing, which is this line, the thing that you want is just this line. So if you put here a zero, you are actually referring to this line. But check the MACD. Here, something different happens. You have two things. So you have to actually tell the copy buffer function, hey, what do you want? The signal line or the main line, which in this case is the MACD. You will see later how to deal with this. But now, in the in the function well, in the indicators that just have one value, you can leave it as zero. So it will take the 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 main value. Indeed, if you put here main line, it will work in the same way. So let's continue. Now it is asking us for the st our starting position. We want to take all the values from the last one. So we want to take values from the last candle, this one that is not closed. We want that. Also, how many values do we want? Now I'm data to save. This is the parameter that we introduced before, remember? And, okay, let me, yeah. Okay, so now where do we save this? In the Emma array. This is the same for almost everything. Instead of RSI, RSI, well, instead of Emma, you put here RSI, and here it happens the same. Now, with the MACD changes a little bit. MACD, and remember, this is the buffer number. So since we want to store the MACD, we are going to put here main line. If you put here a zero, it will work in the same way. But now in order to store the signal, we are going to put here signal line. And here we put signal to store it in the signal array. Again, if you put here a zero and you put here a one, it's going to work in the same way but this is more clear. Perfect. So now we need to store the candles also. We need to load the information from the candles. How? Copy rates, because remember this is an MQL rates variable. And we need to send, okay, the symbol name, symbol, the current period, the, well, the time frame, sorry, starting position, which is zero. How many values do we want? Let's put none data to save. And where do we want to store it? In the candles variable. Excellent. So now with the bot, we want to do the following. Whenever there's a cross, only when there's a cross, we are going to write the information that we want, such as the values, if it is above, below, the cross type, all that. So how do we do this? Very simple. If, and now we should define those two functions that we talked about before, there's a by cross or 
there's a cell cross, one of those two options, and the operation is not open, open operation is not open, remember this means not, we are going to write some things. But before that, let's define this function. So, how do we define a by cross? It is very simple. So, if we come here, how is actually a by cross? You can see that here basically is the cross. So, before the cross, the MACD was below the signal. And after the cross, the MACD is above the signal. So, we are going to basically look for that. How do we look for that? Very simple. We are going to put return, and this is basically returning a, a true or false. If the signal 1, which is the previous one, is above the MACD 1, and the signal, the current 1, is below the current MACD, we are going to send this, which is going to tell us true or false depending on if this is true or not. In the cell cross is the opposite. So in order to put the opposite, we just put here this and this. So if the signal line, the previous one, is below and then is above, we have a cell cross. Perfect. Let's put here a semicolon. And now let's continue with writing some things. How do we write this? Actually, this is very similar to what we did in the header. What we have to do is that, okay, here we have the... Emma data, because first we are going to write the Emma. How do we write the Emma? Very simple, as we did before. For, let me put this right, oh my god, for int i equals zero, i less than num data to save, i plus plus. And, okay, we are going to take the value of the Emma, Emma, and here we are going to put normalized. I will explain you now why this Emma i. Why is this not okay? Because this is going to return a crazy amount of decimals. We don't want a crazy amount of decimals. Well, it depends. But since we don't want that, we are going to normalize this. So we have, I don't know, the number of decimals that this market is, this market is using. So here we have this, perfect. And now we have this value normalized with, let's say that this market, let, let me see. It is using five decimals, so we will have just five decimals. So now we need to store this in this string, the Emma data. How do we do this? Emma data plus equal, my God, plus equal, and we are going to put the double to a string and the double value, which is the Emma normalized, and we are going to concatenate a comma. Excellent. So basically, we have to do the same for the RSI. Let me see. Yeah, next the RSI, then the MACD, and then the signal. So we are going to put here instead of Emma data, RSI data. Let me copy this. And here, RSI. Also here, RSI. RSI. And here, RSI. Excellent. So now we have the RSI data and we have here the MACD. So we have to do the exact same thing. MACD, MACD, oh my God, MACD and MACD. You can see that it is actually very simple. <laughs> it's not very difficult. And finally, we are going to do the exact same thing with the signal signal let me take this signal let me take this signal then here signal and finally here signal perfect but now we need to put several things emma below above or below cross type and the class so how do we know if the emma is above or below this is actually very simple so we are going to create here a string which is the uh, let's put it above, below, and we are going to say, okay, if the last candle is, well, the last candle close is above or equal to the last Emma value, 
this means that it is above. So we are going to put here a one. We are going to write a one. Otherwise, it means that it is below. So zero is going to mean that it is below. Perfect. So now we need to store the cross type. How do we do this? Again, we are going to create another string, cross type. And actually, this is going to be very similar. So at the beginning, it's empty. And now if the cross is a by cross, let's put here by cross, let's say that the cross, oh my god, cross type is going to be a one. Let's say that one is by. And also, let's put here that the last operation is a by. This will be useful later. Perfect. Okay, else if, remember that here it would be, like you have to put a condition because if there is not, a, if it is not a by cross, like yeah, you have to put a condition, cell cross. And indeed I think that with else, just else is okay because here we are checking that either it is a by cross or a cell cross. So yeah, I think you don't need that. But anyways, so here the cross type is going to be zero comma and the last operation is going to be a cell. Perfect. So now we have all the information that we need. We are going to write it in the data and we are going to say, okay, let's put here the in the data. Let's put here Emma data, then the RSI data, then the MACD data then the signal data and finally well above below uh, data and the cross type the cross type but we actually need one thing which is the class is the operation successful or it is not of course we cannot know uh, this now because we are actually in the cross we need to wait two candles to see if it is uh, okay or not so that's why this last operation is useful because we need to check if the price is above or below and depending on the operation, if it is a buy, if it is above, that's good. But it is if it is a sell, that's not good. So here we are going to say, okay, this is going to enter only when there is an operation open. So what we are going to do is that here, okay, now there is an operation open. Like <laughs> we haven't, but yeah, operation open, true. Okay, this was not like this. This is in Spanish. OP, open OP. Okay, perfect. And finally, we need to store the number of candles. Let me check that here. Candles and yeah, this is repeating. The name is repeating. So candles num. Because if you repeat the names, there is an issue. So here we are going to put candles num is equal to the number of bars. This returns the number of loaded uh, candles and this will be very useful because once we have two more, it means that, yeah. So here we put the current symbol and the current period. Perfect. So now we also store the uh, price open, the price at which this operation was open. And this is the candles zero dot close. And indeed, I'm realizing that you don't need to put here number to save code. With one, it's okay, but we will leave it like this. Perfect. Now that we have this, we need something else, which is to say, okay, else if, if there is an open operation, open OP, we are going to do the following. If the number of candles, candles num, plus candles to close the operation, let's say that in this case it's two or whatever, is okay oh my god less okay less or equal than bars we are going to put here symbol well here we put the symbol period okay if this number is actually below it means that now we have more than two or whatever number number we put here new bars new candles so in this case, we actually need to close the operation and we need to check if the operation is successful of not or not. So now we say, okay, if the last operation was a buy, mm -hmm, we are going to say, perfect. If the price open less than candles zero dot close, 
file write and here we are going to write okay fp because that is the file handle okay this if the price open is below the close and the, the, this means that the close is above and we are in a buy so this is fine so we put here a one meaning that hey that is perfect else file right and let's put here fp and we put here a zero let's go okay here else if so remember that now we are in this uh, condition okay if the last operation is a cell else if last operation is a cell we are going to say here basically the same so instead of here checking that the price is above we need to check that the price is below so here we put this perfect so now we are going to uh, write the the things and here indeed this is wrong i should put here data because we write the data plus this data 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 and this is okay you don't need to write the new line uh, character because this automatically writes that fine so now we need to restart the variable such as data we are going to put this to an empty variable empty string and finally operation open operation so this is going to be false because now we don't have an operation open fine so what is the last thing that we have to do we need to put here void a new event on the init what is this event doing it is doing that hey whenever uh, we close the bot what do we want to do remember that we have a file opened so it would be nice to close it how do we do that it is as simple as putting file close and the handle f so now let's compile and check if we have some errors here we have an expected token Mm -hmm. this is not a comma this is a semicolon and okay everything worked fine so let's come back to mt5 and now here let's go to examples let's remove this ai bot so we put data gen which is the last one put it in the period you want put it in the market you want whatever you want here actually i tested this with 10 years of data but this is going to take a lot of time so what we are going to do is that we are going to put it here 2020 like let's put here last month <laughs> well last year yeah last year you can put any years you want so yeah now that we have this we don't want the visual mode so we click on start you wait a little bit because this is going to take a little bit of time and on that time what we are going to do is that we are, i'm going to show you what where this file is going to be so you click here on file you will have something like uh, open files uh, folder something like that you go back it finished <laughs> you go back to meta quotes you come here to tester this is strange uh, thing agent this one and now you have here mql5 files and this is the data let's open this with vsc code and let's check if we actually have what we wanted so let me put it here and at least at the beginning it looks like that so remember we have here the header and each header refers to what we want so for example we put it 20 values i think let me check because i'm not quite sure 10 values and it is storing 20 this could be because in the parameters i have 20 so yeah but you can see that okay 20 so from 0 to 19 so this column is the zero column this second column is the ma1 this third is ma2 so on so we have a lot of data but we need to check basically at the end if it is yeah like this you can see that this would be the class this would be the type of operation the type of cross and this would be the above or below so this is above so now we have all the data we wanted so you can see that this file is actually big remember that we are in the 15 minute uh, time frame 
and that doesn't have a lot of a lot of crosses in one year but if you put it in the one minute you are going to have a huge file and if for example you put here instead of candles to close operation 2 you put 100 the v, the file will be closer the number to save 1000 it will be uh, bigger not closer and yeah so guys i hope you enjoyed this video and now you can see that this bot is going to be a little bit more complex to the previous one and yeah if you liked the video give it a like share subscribe and see you in the next one